Originally, I was planning on doing a review on the Donkey Kong Arcade game, but I played that game for over half an hour and guess what? I couldn't even make it past the second fucking level. Shit is so hard. So I decided to cover something else instead. The Game & Watch is a series of handheld consoles, with the first game releasing in 1980 and the last in 1991. These things are pretty interesting because they're not like the Game Boy or DS where it's pixelated or whatever. The LCD screens like calculators mean the games are way more technically limited. You also don't buy cartridges for these things. Each Game & Watch has one game and that's it. Out of the approximately 70 different Game & Watch games released, 5 of them were Mario games, which I'll talk about today. Well, except for Mario the Juggler, it's just a remake of the Super Simple Ball Game & Watch game, just with Mario, so it'd be pretty dumb to cover it given it has barely anything to offer. The first Mario Game & Watch game released is Mario Bros. Believe it or not, this one actually released 4 months prior to the arcade game, but is it better? Of course it is! The arcade game is uncomparable to the Game & Watch version. Okay, it's not like a brilliant game or anything, but it's almost perfect for what it is given it makes almost no mistakes. But comparing it to the arcade version probably isn't valid given these games are completely different. Mario Bros for Game & Watch is completely unrelated to the arcade version, other than the name and obviously Mario & Luigi are in it. I'm not really sure why this was done other than for... Well, for no reason, but who cares? In Mario Bros, you control both Mario and Luigi at the same time and moving boxes onto different conveyors. That might sound boring, but it can be really fun, and it's no doubt due to the nature of multitasking. You have to constantly look back and forth between both sides of the screen, and then move either Mario or Luigi where they need to be to move the boxes. If a box falls off the conveyor and hits the ground, one of your three lives is taken away. The game does everything it can to make the game engaging but still manageable and it almost completely succeeds in that. The normal way people would make this game is to make you press a button to move the boxes, but this really isn't the right way to do it. Moving up and down to the boxes is already enough tension in of itself, and adding a button press to the mix would just be going over the edge. So Mario Bros way of fixing it is just by moving the boxes automatically when you're in the right position. It's a perfect system for adding tension while still keeping it manageable and they pulled it off super well. But given that this game's quite tense, it's a good idea to let the player take a break before continuing. And that's exactly what they did. After loading 8 boxes onto the truck, you get a short break before your dickhead boss yells at you to keep going, and you're forced to. The only complaint I have with this game is that the game can take a while to get truly challenging, but the funny thing is that it can easily be circumvented. Much like the Mario Bros arcade game NES port, there's a more difficult mode named Game B. This merely means that boxes move faster and there's more of them. While that doesn't sound like much, it essentially fixes my main issue with game A. It starts at the engaging parts rather than building up to it with the boring shit, and I think that's cool. If you want to hear more about this game beyond the game itself, you can check out this great video by a guy named Jan Miesely. It's a great watch and it will be linked in the description. Nonetheless, this is easily the best game out of the four we'll be covering today, purely because it does almost nothing wrong and does almost everything right. Again, it is still very simple and the tech stops it from being much more than what it is, but I commend Nintendo for making a game better than Mario 64 on a machine like this. The second game in the Game & Watch Mario series continues the theme of working jobs, because next we have Mario's Cement Factory. In terms of gameplay, this one is a lot slower pace, and it sadly goes a bit too far with that notion. The gameplay is really repetitive, and I'm gonna explain to you why right now. Cement drops from these containers, and as Mario, you gotta go over to the hopper the cement dropped into and press the lever so it can go through. Then you gotta do the same for the lower hoppers, and that's it. Your main form of traversal between the sides of the factory, as well as the two floors, is these elevators, but it can be hard to tell which way they're going because of the limited hardware. If you fall off them, you lose one of your three lives, but that's the only way you can lose them. First off, the cement drops at just seemingly random times. It's not too common of an issue, but at one point I was just running around the factory for like 30 seconds and cement finally appeared. Second and probably my biggest issue. In Mario Bros, it was the objects that moved at a set speed, and you were the one that could move freely and you needed to move quick. And that made it fun. In Cement Factory, it's the opposite. Because the elevators move at a set speed, it removes a lot of the tension because you can't control how fast you get to the cement. And the cement itself? No need to worry about it. From what I can tell, there's no punishment to taking ages to get to the cement, so it removes a lot of tension that was key in making Mario Bros fun. Not even Game B fixes this. Cement is more common for sure, so it fixes the issue of waiting around I guess. But this doesn't even matter because again, there's no fucking time limit. All this builds up to being my least favorite game in the Game & Watch series. Mario's Bombs Away fares way better, and it's a lot more fun, but Mario Bros still has yet to be topped, if you ask me. The goal of the game is to get the bomb over to this guy and have him throw it on top of one of the trees. After doing that 5 times, you win and the game gives you a bunch of points. However, getting the bomb to the other side is easier said than done, as you also have to worry about any fire that might set the bomb off. This comes in two forms, the enemies in the trees and this guy chucking cigars on the ground which sets off a stream of fire. 
The enemies have these sticks with fire on them, and if you're under them and the bomb is raised when the stick is fully lowered, the bomb is set on fire. You can, however, circumvent this by lowering the bomb, but that puts you at risk of setting the bomb off from the fire stream caused by the guy with the cigar. So you essentially have to manage moving and also changing the position of the bomb at the right time, and it's pretty fun. But I do have some issues. First off, the guy you have to pass the bomb to can only take the bomb at random times, but it doesn't seem to be for any reason, so sometimes you'll just be waiting for him to take the bomb, just for an enemy to move the fire stick down and you have to go backward. Again, it doesn't seem to be for any reason, so it just feels like making the game harder, which would be fine, but it's just done in a really arbitrary way is all. Secondly, when you get hit, one of your three lives is removed. That's completely fine, but what the game also does is also remove all the bombs from the trees, resetting your progress. This isn't even done for any reason other than, again, making the game more difficult. It makes the game way harder to beat, which is super annoying. The game also does have a game beat, and as usual, the game is more fun because of it. Like usual, the game gets faster earlier, so it's more engaging. Overall, the main gameplay loop is still pretty fun, but it has a lot of issues. The final Mario game and watch game to be released is Super Mario Bros. In terms of being a full game, this is probably the closest you can get on the Game & Watch. As the name implies, this is an adaptation of the NES Super Mario Bros, but just on the Game & Watch. This is actually pretty inventive for the system, as the game doesn't just span on a single screen. It's a sort of platformer where the levels scroll forward automatically, and you gotta platform through without falling. The controls are responsive enough, and my only real complaint is that the levels scroll automatically. And yes, I did say levels, plural. Apparently there's 8 different levels in this game, but I got to level 5 and quit. It's just pretty empty most of the time, and the platforming that is there is mostly easy. It is still more engaging than Cement Factory, which is why I like it more, but it's still really bare bones in terms of gameplay, which puts it below Bombs Away, and of course Mario Bros. But overall, these games are good times. The highlight was, of course, Mario Bros. I can actually see myself coming back to that one in the future. But as for the other three, I don't see myself playing those again. I kind of fucking wish these things got remakes or something. Oh, wait! The Game & Watch Gallery series is fucking perfect. It started out on the Game Boy with a game called Game Boy Gallery, which contained remakes of five Game & Watch games. Ball, Vermin, Flagman, Manhole, and Mario Cement Factory. It continued on the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, with Gallery 3 having Mario Bros and Gallery 4 having Cement Factory. I guess calling them remakes is a bit disingenuous considering that there are small tweaks in addition, but for the sake of brevity I'll be calling them that anyway considering they're for the most part the same games. While the version of Cement Factory on Game Boy Gallery is just the same with better visuals, Mario Bros in Gallery 3 and Cement Factory again in Gallery 4 have game design differences. Mario Bros in 3 takes place outdoors and you're also making cakes, I presume to disassociate from any speculation about the bottles and the original containing alcohol of some sort, but outside that there's some gameplay differences too. For one, on the game now fits on one screen. This obviously comes with some compromises, with the conveyors being around half the size. But to fix this issue, cakes hang on the edge for way longer, which is a good solution. Bowser also chills at the top of the screen. For a while I thought it was just, well, there, and I was confused as to what these levers were for. But then I found out that he randomly ground pounds, making the conveyors move in the opposite direction, and you gotta go to the lever to fix it. Even though this realistically should change the game a lot, it doesn't happen very often, and when it does, it's nothing more than a minor annoyance, rather than something that actually gets in your way. Because the conveyors move in the opposite direction, when you go to the lever and come back, the cakes will probably be in the same position, so it doesn't really matter. I wish instead of reversing the direction, they stopped the conveyors entirely, so when the player gets back from pushing the lever, the cakes are in a different position than they were before, making it more of a disadvantage. In the state the game is now, it's just a little worse than the original because of Bowser just being a minor inconvenience, but I still call it a fun time. But if you're asking me, the version of Cement Factory in Gallery 4 is a much better improved version. While I'm still not a huge fan of the game, this version fares a lot better. First off, it looks great, but I'm not just saying that to give it a bonus point, it does actually improve the gameplay too since the fluid motion of the elevators conveys the direction they move in a lot better than the confusing nightmare that was the original. Cement is also a lot more common and there's never a point where you'll be waiting like 30 seconds for a bit of cement to drop. Oh wait, did I say cement? I meant cookie though. I guess to give it more of a Mario feel, you're making cookies now, which I guess I like. Booze can also appear and take up a slot in the harbors. And believe it or not, this does actually affect the gameplay. Yeah, I didn't even notice this in the original, but there's 
actually two ways to lose lives in both the versions. You can obviously fall down the elevator, sure, but I found out while playing this that if a hopper is full and another bit of cookie dough drops onto it, it overflows and ends up falling off, and that takes one of your lives. I didn't even know that when playing the original, but since the men, or I guess cookie dough, is a lot more common, not to mention the booze, this becomes an actual threat and you have to manage your hoppers better. Like what if the top hopper had three bits of dough and the bottom had one? If you dispense every bit of dough onto it, it would overflow and take a life from you, so instead of that, you're gonna dispense one or two to make the top one less prone to overflow, but the bottom one not overflow either. It's not game changing or anything, but it makes you think more about the hopper storage rather than just spamming the button to get the dough to the bottom of the screen as fast as possible. That plus the more common dough making the game more engaging as well as the improved elevators makes this much better than it would be otherwise. Don't get me wrong, this game still isn't great, but it's for sure a step up and easily surpasses Super Mario Bros game and watch. I should also mention that alongside the modernized versions in the galleries are classic versions if you want the unchanged Mario Bros or Cement Factory experience on the go. But yeah, these LCD games are pretty cool. I actually had a lot more to say about the game and watch games than I thought, which is funny considering they're not really video games. I mean video games are like games with video and you can't really count an LCD screen as video. Well, I know Game & Watch Gallery does put them on consoles with video, but that's beside the point. But after this whole video, I thought it'd be fun to put these things into a little ranking, so here we go. Taking the last place, we got Mario Cement Factory, original version as well as the Game Boy Gallery version just above. They're pretty lame, and even on hard mode, cement isn't nearly common enough to make it engaging or rewarding. Game Boy Gallery's version does look better, but it's the exact same game with no real changes. Super Mario Bros. is definitely the most like a real game on the list, but that doesn't make it fun, as it's just an older scroller platform former level which is just an entire game, and yet it still has more fluid air motion than the Mario Bros arcade game. Cement Factory in Gallery 4 is definitely the biggest sleeping quality between versions, but it's still not a great game. If that was just a little more common and the elevators were replaced with proper platforming that you can control the pace of, it'd be pretty great, but as of now it's not too interesting. Mario's Bombs Away has a very strong basis that they fucked up pretty bad. While managing your position and the bomb's position in relation to the fire sticks and the fire on the ground is good fun, the guy throwing the bombs up on the tree are doing that completely at random times as well as all bombs being removed from trees when you die feel like arbitrary difficulty. And finally, Mario Bros and Gallery 3 at number 2 and the original Mario Bros at number 1. These obviously aren't games that'll go down in history or anything, but if you ask me, these games are really fun with their fast-paced multitasking gameplay. The Gallery 3 version is just a little worse to me, as while it does look better, Bowser is completely pointless and serves as a minor annoyance rather than an obstacle. Still though, it's not a huge deal and these games are still fun. I just like the simplicity of the Game & Watch version more. But yeah, that's the Game & Watch games. For games that can be barely counted as video games, these things are really interesting, and sometimes fun too. But who cares, you guys want to see me talk about Mario 3. Who gives a fuck? And I'll tell you who gives a fuck. Me!